the hyperthermia sort of amplifies the way that the chemotherapy and radiation mm -hmm. work. Is that accurate? And, That's and right. how does that happen? So with chemotherapy, it it causes the drug to penetrate more deeply into the tumor, and you can also deliver much more drug to the tumor because of heat effects. Um, and then the second thing that it does is it inhibits the ability of a cell to repair damage that's created by the chemotherapy. So those are two major effects. And how specifically does the heat make the tumor uh, more receptive, mm -hmm. uh, if that's the correct word, to yeah, the chemotherapy? Sure. Is it, does it make it more porous? Does it make it more like a sponge or something? Yeah, in a way it does. It, it, what it does is it causes holes in the blood vessels, makes them leaky. And that allows the drug to penetrate further out into the tumor than it would otherwise be possible. The other thing that happens as well is that the cells themselves become more permeable to the drug. So the drug gets into the into cells more easily as well. Now, does this mean that you can also then give more powerful doses of chemotherapy mm -hmm. without hurting the, the person yeah, more? Yeah, that's, that's in, in essence what we've been able to show. So in preclinical models, rodent models, we've shown that we can deliver 30 times more drug to a tumor with this thermally sensitive fat bubble than we can with a uh, regular drug. So you're not just seeing success in the rodent models, we are seeing this work in people. Yes, in combination with, with radiation, definitely. The drug stuff that we're working on is not as well developed and uh, we are just entering into human clinical trials with combinations of drug radiation and heat for locally advanced cervix cancer and also uh, the, the fat globule drug is being tested in women with chest wall recurrences of breast cancer mm -hmm. and also uh, locally advanced breast cancer. How would you explain to the layperson how you're delivering this incredibly high temperature yeah. into a tumor? We, we use mainly, we use microwaves mainly. Um, and these are, uh, we have devices that either deliver microwaves from a single port, and that would be for superficial tumors on the chest, on the, on the surface of the body, mm -hmm. or we have arrays of microwave devices that, that can fit around parts of the body, for example, around a leg, or a, a surrounding a breast, or surrounding the entire pelvis or abdomen of a patient. These are these cuffs that I read about? Yeah. 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 And does it hurt? It it does. In fact, we rely on the patient's feedback to tell us if things are getting too hot, in addition to a lot of measurements of temperature that we make. So it can hurt if the temperatures get too high, but we allow the patient to tell us if that's happening, and that's how part of the feedback or the control process. I think I read somewhere that you are talking about prescribing heat. You know, you'd like to see mm -hmm. the day where, a, you know, a prescription is actually mm -hmm. written for heat combination yeah, with yeah. chemo and radiation. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Is, it, are you, is that your vision for this as just another part of the treatment? It is part of my vision, yeah, definitely. In the past, hyperthermia was done what we call dump and pray, and that is you dump in enough power until the patient says ouch and then you stop because you don't know what else to do. And it's our feeling that it's a lot more complicated than that. You really need to know what the temperatures are and in fact, with the more sophisticated ways we have of measuring temperature now, we may actually be able to control the temperature within the tumor in real time. And that would allow us to get better temperature, more uniform temperature uh, treatment of the tumor and, uh, and control it on a, in a much more sophisticated way. So, so you're seeing this evolve from something that, that is, was rather hit or miss yeah. to, to a really controlled medicine in a way. Yes, definitely. Using heat... Mm -hmm. as harnessing heat as a medicine. Yeah, yeah, I like that term, yeah, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, um, and how far are we from that actually happening? It, it's interesting, you know, there are, uh, there are already uh, eight or ten randomized studies published showing that hyperthermia improves radiation effects in a variety of different cancers, uh, including head and neck, glioblastoma, melanoma, chest wall recurrences of breast cancer, cervix cancer, esophageal cancer. A lot of the tough ones. Tough ones. Yeah, it's not embraced very widely. And the, the pre reason for that is because it's technically difficult to do. And so having an ability to measure temperatures non-invasively and sophisticated devices that can take that data and control the power is what's needed to make it more easily implemented 